Esther, chapters 1 and 2. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes, the great king, on the first day of Nisan, Mardochias, the son of Jairus, the son of Samias, the son of Cecius, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Jew dwelling in the city Susa, a great man, serving in the king's palace, saw a vision. Now he was of the captivity which Nabucodonosor, king of Babylon, had carried captive from Jerusalem with Jeconias, the king of Judea. And this was his dream. Behold, voices and a noise, thunders and earthquake, tumult upon the earth. And behold, two great serpents came forth, both ready for conflict. And there came from them a great voice, and by their voice every nation was prepared for battle, even to fight against the nation of the just. And behold, a day of darkness and blackness, tribulation and anguish, affliction and great tumult upon the earth. And all the righteous nation was troubled, fearing their own afflictions, and they prepared to die, and cried to God. And from their cry there came, as it were, a great river from a little fountain, even much water. And light and the sun arose, and the lowly were exalted, and devoured the honorable. And Mardochias, who had seen this vision, and what God designed to do, having awoke, kept it in his heart, and desired by all means to interpret it, even till night. And Mardochias rested quiet in the palace with Gabatha and Thara, the king's two chamberlains, eunuchs who guard the palace. And he heard their reasonings, and searched out their plans, and learnt that they were preparing to lay hands on King Artaxerxes, and he informed the king concerning them. And the king examined the two chamberlains, and they confessed, and were executed. And the king wrote these things for memorial. Also, Mardochias wrote concerning these matters. And the king commanded Mardochias to attend in the palace, and gave him gifts for this service. And Amon, the son of Amadathes, the Bugian, was honorable in the sight of the king, and he endeavored to hurt Mardochias and his people because of the two chamberlains of the king. And it came to pass after these things, in the days of Artaxerxes, this Artaxerxes ruled over 127 provinces from India. In those days, when King Artaxerxes was on the throne in the city of Susa, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast to his friends and the other nations, and to the nobles of the Persians and Medes, and the chief of the satraps. And after this, after he had shown to them the wealth of his kingdom, and the abundant glory of his wealth during a hundred and eighty days, when, I say, the days of the marriage feast were completed, the king made a banquet to the nations who were present in the city six days, in the court of the king's house, which was adorned with hangings of fine linen, and flax on cords of fine linen and purple, fastened to golden and silver studs on pillars of parian marble and stone. There were golden and silver couches on the pavement of emerald stone, and of pearl, and of parian stone, and openwork coverings variously flowered, having roses worked round about, gold and silver cups, and a small cup of carbuncle set out of the value of thirty thousand talents, abundant and sweet wine, which the king himself drank. And this banquet was not according to the appointed law. But so the king would have it, and he charged the stewards to perform his will and that of the company. Also Aston, the queen, made a banquet for the women in the palace where King Artaxerxes dwelt. And on the seventh day, the king, being merry, built Amon, and Bazan, and Thara, and Barazi, and Zatholtha, and Abataza, and Tharaba, the seven chamberlains, servants of the king Artaxerxes, to bring in the queen to him, to enthrone her, and crown her with the diadem, and to show her to the princes, and her beauty to the nations, for she was beautiful. The queen asked and hearkened not to him to come with the chamberlains, so the king was grieved and angered. And he said to his friends, Thus has Aston spoken. Pronounce therefore upon this case law and judgment. So Arcasius and Sarsotheus and Malasir, the princes of the Persians and Medes, who were near the king, who sat chief in rank by the king, drew near to him, and reported to him according to the laws how it was proper to do to Queen Aston, because she had not done the things commanded of the king by the chamberlains. And Mucius said to the king and to the princes, Queen Aston has not wronged the king only, but also all the king's rulers and princes. For he has told them the words of the queen, and how she disobeyed the king. As then, said he, she refused to obey King Artaxerxes. So this day shall the other ladies of the chiefs of the Persians and Medes, having heard what she said to the king, 
dare in the same way to dishonor their husbands. If then it seem good to the king, let him make a royal decree, and let it be written according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, and let him not alter it. And let not the queen come into him any more, and let the king give her royalty to a woman better than she. And let the law of the king, which he shall have made, be widely proclaimed in his kingdom. And so shall all the women give honor to their husbands, from the poor even to the rich. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did as Mucius had said, and sent into all his kingdom through the several provinces, according to their language, in order that men might be feared in their own houses. And after this the king's anger was pacified, and he had no more mentioned Aston, bearing in mind what she had said, and how he had condemned her. Then the servants of the king said, Let there be sought for the king chaste and beautiful young virgins, and let the king appoint local governors in all the provinces of his kingdom. And let them select fair and chaste young damsels, and bring them to the city Susa, into the women's apartment. And let them be consigned to the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women. And let things for purification and other attendants be given to them. And let the woman who shall please the king be queen instead of Aston. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now there was a Jew in the city of Susa, and his name was Mardochias, the son of Jairus, the son of Semias, the son of Cecius, of the tribe of Benjamin who had been brought a prisoner from Jerusalem, which Nabuchodonosor, king of Babylon, had carried into captivity. And he had a foster child, daughter of Amminadab, his father's brother, and her name was Esther. And when her parents were dead, he brought her up for a wife for himself, and the damsel was beautiful. And because the king's ordinance was published, many damsels were gathered to the city Susa under the hand of Guy, and Esther was brought to Guy, the keeper of the women. And the damsel pleased him, and she found favor in his sight, and he hasted to give her the things for purification, and her portion, and the seven maidens appointed her out of the palace, and he treated her and her maidens well in the women's apartment. But Esther discovered not her family nor her kindred, for Mardochias had charged her not to tell. But Mardochias used to walk every day by the women's court, to see what would become of Esther. Now this was the time for a virgin to go into the king, when she should have fulfilled twelve months, for so are the days of purification fulfilled, six months while they are anointing themselves with the oil of myrrh, and six months with spices and women's purifications. And then the damsel goes into the king, and the officer, to whomsoever he shall give command, will bring her to come in with him from the women's apartment to the king's chamber. She enters in the evening, and in the morning she departs to the second women's apartment, where Guy, the king's chamberlain, is keeper of the women. And she goes not in to the king again, unless she should be called by name. And when the time was fulfilled for Esther, the daughter of Minadab, the brother of Mardochias' father, to go in to the king, she neglected nothing which the chamberlain, the women's keeper, commanded. For Esther found grace in the sight of all that looked upon her. So Esther went in to King Artaxerxes in the twelfth month, which is Adar, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther, and she found favor beyond all other virgins, and he put on her the queen's crown. And the king made a banquet for all his friends, and great men, for seven days. And he highly celebrated the marriage of Esther, and he made a release to those who were under his dominion. But Mardochias served in the palace. Now Esther had not discovered her kindred, for so Mardochias commanded her to fear God and perform his commandments, as when she was with him. And Esther changed not her manner of life. And two chamberlains of the king, the chiefs of the bodyguard, were grieved, because Mardochias was promoted, and they sought to kill King Artaxerxes. And the matter was discovered to Mardochias, and he made it known to Esther, and she declared to the king the matter of the conspiracy. And the king examined the two chamberlains and hanged them. And the king gave orders to make a note for a memorial in the royal records of the good offices of Mardochias as a commendation. 4 Maccabees, chapter 4. For a certain man named Simon, who was in opposition to Onias, who once held the high priesthood for life, and was an honorable and a good man, after that, by slandering him in every way, he could not injure him with the people, went away as an exile, with the intention of betraying his country. Whence coming into Apollonius, the military governor of Syria and Phoenicia, and Cilicia, he said, Having good will to the king's affairs, I am come to inform thee that infinite private wealth is laid up in the treasuries of Jerusalem, which do not belong to the temple, but pertain to King Seleucus. 
Apollonius, acquainting himself with the particulars of this, praised Simon for his care of the king's interests, and going up to Seleucus, informed him of the treasure, and getting authority about it, and quickly advancing into our country with the accursed Simon and a very heavy force. He said that he came with the commands of the king, that he should take the private money of the treasury. And the nation, indignant at this proclamation, and replying to the effect that it was extremely unfair that those who had committed deposits to the sacred treasury should be deprived of them, resisted as well as they could. But Apollonius went away with threats into the temple. And the priests, with the women and children, having supplicated God to throw his shield over the holy, despised place, and Apollonius going up with his armed force to the seizure of the treasure, there appeared from heaven angels riding on horseback, all radiant in armor, filling them with much fear and trembling. And Apollonius fell down half dead upon the court, which is open to all nations, and extended his hands to heaven, and implored the Hebrews with tears to pray for him, and propitiate the heavenly hosts. For he said that he had sinned, so as to be consequently worthy of death, and that if he were saved, he would celebrate to all men the blessedness of the holy place. Onias the high priest, induced by these words, although for other reasons anxious that King Seleucus should not suppose that Apollonius was slain by human device, and not by divine punishment, prayed for him. And he, being thus unexpectedly saved, departed to manifest to the king what had happened to him. But on the death of Seleucus the king, his son Antiochus Epiphanes succeeds to his kingdom, a man of haughty pride and terrible, who, having deposed Onias from the high priesthood, appointed his brother Jason to be high priest, who had made a covenant, if he would give him this authority, to pay yearly 3,660 talents. And he committed to him the high priesthood and rulership over the nation. And he both changed the manner of living of the people, and perverted their civil customs into all lawlessness. So that he had not only erected a gymnasium on the very citadel of our country, but neglected the guardianship of the temple. At which divine vengeance being grieved, instigated Antiochus himself against them. For being at war with Ptolemy in Egypt, he heard that on a report of his death being spread abroad, the inhabitants of Jerusalem had exceedingly rejoiced, and he quickly marched against them. And having subdued them, he established a decree that if any of them lived according to the laws of his country, he should die. And when he could by no means destroy by his decrees the obedience to the law of the nation, but saw all his threats and punishments without effect, for even women, because they continued to circumcise their children, were flung down a precipice along with them, knowing beforehand of the punishment. When, therefore, his decrees were disregarded by the people, he himself compelled by means of tortures every one of this race, by tasting forbidden meats, to abjure the Jewish religion. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 1 through 25. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O oh, fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, 
and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers, and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years, until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose.